uh, thank God again for bringing this wonderful opportunity for us to gather for equipped. Tell your neighbor equipped. I just want to bless the Lord for all the men of God ministers for creating such a powerful atmosphere. And I believe that what we will share tonight will not be um, entertainment, but the Bible said the entrance of his word bring light and understanding to the simple. So in other words, it means that the word of God makes complicated things become common sense. Someone say common sense. Do you know it's when you don't get something that you feel out of place, right? I know one of my, my youngest, I remember I was, I was talking to her on the phone and I was about to say something about the series she was watching. She nearly cut the phone. She's like, I don't like spoilers because nobody likes a spoiler. But with Jesus, he allows you to be a spoiler. Somebody say I'm a spoiler. So nothing catches you by surprise. Is the technical team ready with me tonight? Are you ready? So we are going to share something which I believe will be very key because the Bible said there's a tribe, out of the 12 tribe of Israel, um, there was one particular tribe called the Issachar. The Bible, they were not blessed with skills, ability, but one thing that was so specific, they understood the time and what Israel ought to do. So I hope everybody can see. So we are going to have three sections of tonight's, uh, you can call it expose. So we are going to have an insight, and we're going to have a time for Q&A, and we're going to go again to the further base. So what I'm going to um, ask my lovely helpers for tonight, so while everything is going in, if you have a question, you can lift up your hand, and they can write it down, the question, so that they can be able to read it out, so they can be quite evenly ordered, because we can't be able to cover everything tonight, but believe what you will learn will set you, as our pastors say, on fire so that you can be different for your generation. So, if everybody's ready, the main text for tonight is taken from First Chronicle chapter 22, verse 5. I hope everybody can see. So, I had the honor and pleasure to make sure everything is done so you don't have to turn to your Bible most of the time, but it's already there. So, by the entrance of the world. So, First Chronicle 22, 5, it says, David said, my son Solomon is young and is inexperienced, and the house of the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of the nation. So the underlying word, therefore I will make preparation for it, so that David, so David made extensive preparation before his death. Father, we thank you for tonight. We pray that, Lord, that nothing else, nothing more, nothing less except for Jesus be exalted upon this place. I pray that our heart, our mind be in alignment so that your spirit can pass through. So that at the end of the day, that we will be the people. Just like in the book of Acts, the Bible says they turn the world upside down. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so going back to the text, one of the things that's so important... Um, while preparing for this, for all the time people, I've always thought to myself, Solomon was the man who built a great temple because he was wise. <laughs> but to my surprise, he was only able to do well because somebody before him made a preparation that covers in an experience. <laughs> That's also important in ministry. Whenever you see someone doing well, they've said that he's doing well because somebody else labor with no results, so he can labor without effort but with more results. Can I say one more time? That's why I've got a problem with many young ministers that are coming in and looking at the old generation and say, we're coming to correct them. They were rubbish. Remember, you are only having an easy path because somebody went the extra mile so you can have it easy. So what I like about this, David said something, Solomon is inexperienced. So he made preparation to cover his inexperience. We love how wise he was, but we did know somebody realized beyond all that wisdom, there was inexperience. And let me prove to you how inexperienced he was. In spite of his wisdom, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Inexperience. <laughs> In spite of how great he was, he had so many children. I'm sure he stopped counting. Even this church is not enough to be Solomon's bride. I'm sure every weekend he was getting engaged somewhere. <laughs> paying, imagine paying diaries. 
all the, all the men to be like, like listen, don't, don't let your girl go next to Salomon because she's gone, you know? <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> and it's awesome. Salomon is talking to your girl. Kaya off, you know? But what we're bringing tonight is tell your neighbor equipped. All right. There's one key phrase that some of you probably saw in the advert. It say, change happens automatically, but transition takes time. So let's say it together. Change happens automatically. Transition takes time. It's very important to now because I'm going to be hammering upon this word because the whole purpose of being equipped is not for you just to change, but to transition. This is what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is the same today and forever. I never understood that, but I understood what the Bible was trying to say. It simply says that Jesus is constant because he transitioned, but he never changed. <laughs> so whether you change, he only transitioned and remained constant since part of the change. So the purpose of being equipped tonight is to make sure that you are not going to change. Because this is the problem we have in church. We have too many people who present change, but they don't present transition. <laughs> you are going to be shocked tonight. Because when I was putting it together, it even made me question and realize. Now I understood what the Bible says. Many people will come before Christ and say, I did this. And God say, mm. it's because somewhere along the line, you had too many people who told you they changed, but they didn't transition. Are you with me? So what? Romans 12, 2. We love this verse. He said, do not conform to the pattern of this world, I love the word pattern, which basically means that in the world we're living in, there is a pattern that follows. That's why it's important for you to know the pattern so that you can understand. It's like in a normal life when you come out and you see the clouds are gathering, you can tell it's going to rain because there is a pattern how things go. So the Apostle Paul was saying before, do not be conformed. I never understood. I was thinking, What's the, it looks great for Sunday message, be transformed, uh -huh, oh, shouting. But when I took my time, I began to understand why the Apostle Paul was saying, do not conform. Because it is possible for things to change. And before you know it, you didn't intend to be changed, but you were changed by the pattern. Are you with me? So come with me now. There is a study which was taken by the late Dr. Miles Monroe. I kind of put it together. I give my own real remix. It's called The Different Age of Time. This will make you not understand Romans 12 we've been talking about. Because the Bible says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Now, there's actually seven ages of time, but I compress it to six. So, throughout history, the first age of time is called the Renaissance, the, the Renaissance Age. Under the time of the Renaissance Age, the whole world was moving from religion to science. I don't have really time to spin it and then paraphrase it, but you understand from that section, this is where we have a lot of Hebrew, Israelites, black, whatever, black power, the fight against this one. Because according to them, they say that the white people brought Jesus to Africa. Wrong. Because throughout the world, people were worshipping what is called the unknown God. For those with your Bible, your, your Bible, your Bible research, there's a place in the Bible where the Apostle Paul talks about the unknown God. This is the time we're living in. So even though people didn't know how to describe him, they were worshipping something about Jesus, about God, but they could not give him a name. You go do your research. In Africa, you literally find through history there were places where they were worshipping just like Catholic churches, but they didn't have a name for it. So in reality, the white man did not come and give a black man Jesus. Jesus was already there. They just came and gave him an interpretation of what he's supposed to be. So now, when we move from the, the reason why they moved from Religion to science because although people were worshipping an unknown God, people started also worshipping creation instead of the creator. So science became to redirect people and realize, no, do not worship the sun. The sun is a creation, not a creator. Do not worship the water because it's a creation and creator. So science began to explain certain things that were supposed to be complicated. Are you with me? Stay with me for the part. So now we move from the age of renaissance to the age of reasoning. This is where a lot of philosophy was brought. The Greek brought us philosophy. Socrates was of a Plato. Is that what I think? Before people correct me. <laughs> yeah? So these people brought philosophy. And even those type of philosophies also find in the Bible. Remember, the Apostle Paul quote a statement. In him we move and have a very being. It's not biblical. He say, these are what your 
people have said. So there were Shakespeare in those days. So those times, belief was based on philosophy. It was like, you got to display your smile. you got to give some 12 nights. Shakespeare sounds like, oof, this guy's deep. That was the pattern of the time. So we move on from that to what is called the modern and post age. This is where you have a lot of development, a lot of industrial revolution, all this kind of thing. Are you still with me? Please stay with me. So after that, we move to the age of secularism. Under the age of secularism, the role was to remove God and make people become open-minded. For those of you who follow that song, we used to do the awakening and other um, expose. I spoke about a lady called Alice Bailey. She's one of the well-known witch, wizard, demonic person that inspired people like Alistair Crowley. And they set up what is known as a 10-point plan. Research some of these things I'm talking to you right now. And the idea among the plan was to remove God from school, introduce homosexuality, cause divorce. Go research this. Because these people were tapping into the age of secularism. So don't just get surprised and thinking, ah, people are ungodly. Remember Romans 12 too. He said, do not conform because there is a pattern. My question is, do you understand the pattern that you're living in? We have no clue. Sunday, church. Monday, work. Come back, Netflix. Sleep, wake up. You don't understand what pattern? So after the age of secularism, we go to the age of scientific thinking. Now, this is the age that Boras always called the new age. The new age is where people start tapping into things like your aura, your your energy, you know, people like say, I don't like spending time with that negative energy, you just think that's deep. <laughs> Nonsense. Yeah, because under that particular thing, people had to understand science and bridge between science and spirituality. So you explain and say, it's releasing some negative vibe, I can feel it. Science. Elements of the mind. The sixth sense, yeah? The karma. Just to exp- all that. But the whole purpose of it was to create the interfaith movement. So it's no longer that you are wrong, we're right, we can agree to disagree, but we will agree. That's the whole purpose of it. So it's no longer Jesus is the only way. No, he's actually going to God. It's like you're going to the mountain. You climb on one side, I climb on the other side, and we go to the top and we sing Kumbaya. That's the age you're talking about. Remember the pattern of the age. And then we ended up on the age, which I call the age of the enlightened. The age of the enlightened is when spirituality and consciousness is the theme of the day. Under the age which we're living in, it's not very difficult to find a proper atheist. I'm telling you. Hard. Even a proper atheist, they'll tell you, I've got built spirituality. They'll tell you, I don't go to church, but I connect to that God. I don't call him God. I call him the force. I call him uh, the war bridge. Don't make sense. But I've got my own connection because we are under the age of what is called the enlightened. So consciousness is what drives the day. You have people that believe, I believe your word got power. What you say, come back. Mm. But whose word? Your word or his word? Because it's about the enlightenment where it's all about self-empowerment, no longer God empowerment. Are you with me? So now, under the age of the enlightened, we are in a place where... This is, I call it the illusion of foundation. Illusion of foundation, number one, is say it is easier to live with consequences than to have poor principle. Let me tell you one thing. God only rescues you with miracle so that he can reintroduce principle. God never intended to keep giving you miracle. And I'll prove it to you. Miracle only existed for 40 days in the wilderness. The moment the children of Israel stopped in, the, came in, the, in, in Canaan, the Bible said, man, I stop. So miracles is actually God's intervention. But you're supposed to live by principle. But under the age we're living in, people want to disregard God's principle and say, you can live with the consequences. And I prove it to you. What doesn't kill you, make you stronger. What doesn't defeat you, 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 you if you fall seven times, believe in yourself. Is the f- foundation of illusion. Let me prove it to you. <laughs> Second Timothy 3, 2. Read it. People will become lovers of money. When I read it again, understand what he says, underline People will become. In other words, you were not like this because you didn't understand the pattern. You eventually became something you could not recognize yourself. Ah, 
I've always preached this. Nobody wakes up in the morning saying, I want to just go and have so many kids as a wedlock. But because you don't understand the pattern, you become a victim of society. Uh, there was a show, there was a show of a woman that got a man. One man woke up and said, um, I have 28 children with 16 baby mom. He's not 50 yet, which means he hasn't finished. <laughs> yeah. Now, one man, huh? 28, 16. <laughs> Somebody say you become. There are so many people, if you really look at your life, you are slowly becoming someone that you are not. Slowly. <laughs> now you see what the Apostle Paul kept preaching and say, do not conform. He knew ahead, he said, there is a pattern that you do not see. You can speak in tongue, you can fall, but the Bible says, in the last days, people will become. There's actually a list. If you go back home, you see us and say, oh, maybe I'm a lover of money, I'm a lover, and I love the word, grinding. You think, it's, no, 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 no. You are slowly becoming someone that you're not. I'm just going to pick one. I'm sure the mothers are going to shout for me to, after this, yeah? Disobedient to parents. Now, let me show you. Remember, we spoke about it. Come on, come with me, technology. It's coming. All right, help me move to the next slide. Okay. All right, it's coming. Are you with me? All right, move to the next one. All right, cool. So, it's easier to live under consequences than uphold principle. Now, this is what Exodus 20 says. <laughs> Honor your father and your mother that you may what? Huh. This is the principle, right? So according to the foundation of religion, it make you think that if I disregard that, I can live with the consequences. Let me show you where. So you think if I go to the gym, I eat healthy, I can disrespect my parents and live long. Wrong. One of the reasons why we're losing a lot of young people is because of the issue of upholding principles. Uh, in the society we live in, people are living longer, but young people are dying sooner. Something is wrong. Uh, you just think, oh, they just shut him. They just do this. Look most time. There is a breakdown of family house because the illusion tells you, disrespect the principle. You are your own being. No one can tell me anything. Shut up. Whatever. What are you going to do? You step outside the world say, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> illusion of foundation. Because long life as a principle, gym, health, eating healthy is only an addition. Most of us now we're coming for prayer. I have cancer. I have this. So there has to be miracle. No, no, no. There are principles that you are disrespecting. Therefore, you can't live with the consequences. Are you with me? So stop looking for night vigil praying. Why is killing London? It's starting for what are the principles our young people are disrespecting. Somebody say equipped. Somebody say equipped. Second foundation illusion is it's difficult. To live right and even harder to undo wrong deeds. It's killing a lot of people. Because they already know ah, being a Christian is hard. Ask them to go to Iraq, Saudi Arabia. You see how hard it is. <laughs> Think it's hard. I can't come to Sunday until you start worshiping in, in, in the cave. There's a story in the Bible, Mark 10, 20, where Jesus speaks to, it's called the rich young man ruler. And he was trying to introduce, telling Jesus how I kept the law, I did this. But Jesus said, you lack one thing. No matter how good you are, everybody has one area where they lack. One area. Why is it so important? Because God never called you to be perfect. He just called you to be improving. Your improvement is his perfection. The problem with us is that because we're not perfect, so we just give up. No. Is your improvement that show to God that you're perfect. Because while you're improving, God hides your flaws. Let me show you. The Bible says they could not find nothing against Daniel except for his God. Are you going to tell me Daniel didn't have issue? No, 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 no. Because Daniel proposed in his heart, I will not do this. God said, I'm going to hide your flaws. Ah. When you propose yourself, I will not live like this. People will Google you, go on Facebook. They can't find no pictures. <laughs> you're, you're missing it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 
People think you're, 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 you're a witch, you're whatever. Because every time you propose by yourself to improve, God makes you perfect. So Jesus said, sell everything and follow me. But the Bible said the young man was sad and grieved. Because he was trying to show Jesus that I've changed. But Jesus was trying to highlight that you didn't transition. So to everybody you look like, you've changed. But Jesus could spot somewhere and say, you haven't transitioned. Are you with me? Somebody say, equipped. They say when life challenges you, it is your conviction that will answer back. But you can't have a conviction if you haven't been equipped to transition. So many of us face so many issues of life, but the question is, where is the conviction that will make you answer life back when life strikes? You can say a lot of hallelujah, amen, and all that, but when life begins to shake you, where is the conviction that will help you say like the four Hebrew boys, even if he doesn't this time? <laughs> but I made up my mind. That's conviction right there. Because they didn't understand that I am not a follower of Christ because of what he does but because of who he has made me become. Are you with me? Now, under the age of the enlightened, before we close our first part and go to the Q&A, so please feel free if you've got questions, just raise your hand. They'll write down some of the questions before we go to the last part. There are two elements, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1 and 3 explains it. It's called the great falling away. It is coming. It is already here. Statistics have shown that a lot of young people between college and university that started in the church, 80% lose their faith. How many parents who send the kids to uni, when they come back, they're like, ha, ah, who's this? <laughs> they wear their nice, now they have different hair, tattoos, and face, and they're like, who's, who's this Wiz Khalifa coming to my house? Because the reality is there are two elements that will strike everybody, which is forced conversion and false sense of security. We're going to start with false sense of security. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 31, Jesus warned people, don't worry. I love this. If Jesus said don't worry, it means you'll be worried. Because <laughs> if he didn't say it, that means that you're not going to feel like, why am I worried? But he said don't worry for three things. Eating, drinking, and what you wear. These are the three things that affect everybody. These are actually like metaphor. Your eating is your ability to provide. Every man feel like a provider. That's your eating. Drinking talks about your ability to socialize and just enjoy life. But your wearing is to social status, your achievement. And if you let those free components become who you are, you're in a false sense of security. <laughs> we have a lot of people facing depression because of these three things. The moment one of those aspects is hit, who are you? If they can take away your degree, take away your achievement, would you still be yourself? One person said, if God doesn't give you what you want, would you give him what he needs? <laughs> we have a lot of people that come to church for these three things. What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? We have so many night videos. I lost my job. Pastor, have this feet. How do you say? And Jesus said, don't worry. Because some of you are turning men of God into liars because of these three things. I'll find you a prophecy for where. <laughs> I'll find you a prophecy. <laughs> Jesus said, don't worry. So we have a lot of people who come to church under these three things. Your prayer request, these three things. You want to worship, but your hand is up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just wait for prayer. But sh- ah, three things. Based on this, Jesus said, don't worry. And let me show you why. This is what the Bible says. I love it. Because pagan run after this. In other words, it means if you're after the three things, you think you're Christian, but God sees you as a pagan. That shocked me when I was putting it together. I didn't know God was saying, don't worry, not because he can't supply, but he said, if you keep worrying, I can't recognize you because you're no longer like me. Ah, ah, ah. Pagan run after this. Pagan look after this. Pagan look every day. You see them happy. They're always on the run. I've got to do well. I've got to see how many. I've got 20,000 followers. Now they've got to go to 40,000. Oh, they dropped down 0.5%. What did I do wrong? I need to go on a diet. Maybe my cheekbone should have gone in. It didn't go in. Maybe I left without my makeup. Because pagan ran after this. <laughs> I'm telling you. Pagan ran after this. 
And it's a sad thing that the people in the church are behaving like pagan and trying to lift up their holy hands to a God who say, who are you? That's what the Bible say. My people worship me with their hand. Why the heart? Why? Because why you worship with your hand? God says, that's a pagan right there. Somebody say equipped. Full sense of security. Even preachers, full sense of security. How many branches have I opened? How many services do I run? How many invitations do I give every year? <laughs> if all of those things drops off, you're no longer on Facebook. <laughs> Who are you? One person said the day that Facebook will close, there'll be a lot of tears and joy. So you forget, my members are finished. <laughs> My special daddy, bishop, archbishop, uncle, special daddy will be gone. If they tear all of this away, that's why you see when Job lost everything, his wife got exposed. <laughs> you thought she was saved. You thought she was there. And she looked at Job and said, for how long are you going to stay there? If God had to delay your prayer request, would you still live for him? <laughs> <laughs> Let me prove it to you. Whatever you believe in God for. Let me add 25 years to it. <laughs> the lady's going to say, oh, I don't want to say marriage. <laughs> yeah? 25 years. <laughs> yeah? You're going on Facebook, you're seeing engagement, 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 traditional, this one, and you're just seeing there. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Or you're looking, oh, I want to have a child and for 25 years. But guess what? Abraham had 25 years. We read those things. It looks good when it's somebody else. But when it's you, now you're like, ah, la, la, la. This Christian thing is long. I didn't come for this. Somebody say equipped. Job wife was very faithful. Gave him kids, shouting, the Lord is good. I will lift him up. And then when everything fell down, he said, aha, Abby, <laughs> where are we going with this thing? I love this. She said, curse God and die. She should have said, oh, let's curse, let's die. No, she said, you curse, you die, I'll go remarry. <laughs> I'll go marry again. <laughs> it was a trap. <laughs> Somebody say equipped. Are you with me? Are you with me? Let's stop showing people the change. Let's ask God to transition. Do you want to know how Rome, Roman Empire fell? It's quite interesting. The Greek were taken over by the Roman, but the Roman never had anybody taking them over. Roman conquered everywhere. The UK has Roman road. France has a bit of Roman. Every, everywhere had Roman. Do you know what killed the Roman? The Bible says Ecclesiastes 1.9. I'm using the Roman Empire to show you the day that we're living in. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. So whatever was, remember I talk about the pattern. The apostle Paul said, do not conform. There is a pattern. The same way the enemy attack your grandma, he will attack you in repackaged in a different way. That's why mother can look at the daughter and thinking, child, that boy is lying. <laughs> because they've seen the same package in a different brand. <laughs> they can spot the demon away. But because you don't see the pattern, you oh, no, no, it's not true. My was like thinking, child, please. <laughs> We've seen that devil before. Roman got destroyed because of three things. Sexual pleasure. Immoralities. To the extent, if you study it, because being a Caesar was like a title. It wasn't a name. Twelve out of the fourteen Caesar had an attraction for boys. Doesn't that sound familiar? Maybe you didn't see the pattern. Let me bring it back. Do you know they are trying? They are not trying. It's already been legalized. Pedophilia. Why? The pattern coming back again. The Roman was so powerful that they would get slave and turn them into their lovers. Men were allowed to have slave lovers. And it was, as long as you are the, the one with the pack and the six pack, eight packs and the abs pack and the neck pack, you are still fine. If I take a bottle of water, which is very nice, some of you got under your chair, and I put a drop of urine, just a drop, would you still drink it? 
Why not now? It's just a drop. It's just a drop. Come on. You can trace the drop and just spill and just continue. Why won't you drink it? One drop has contaminated everything. What is the enemy dropping in your life that can ruin you? I didn't include it in here. <laughs> David, we love David. Such a great man. He was a fighter. And I discovered that when he came to war matters, he was disqualified. I was like, how? This man's CV is amazing. Create some even when he's crying. <laughs> it's so nice. But the Bible says when he wanted to build the temple, God said, you don't qualify. He's thinking, what did I do? Your hand is full of blood. He raised warriors when he was supposed to raise worshippers. For those of you who study your Bible, he took 300 people that were depressed. Maybe God wanted them to become worshippers. He turned them into great warriors. And the people changed, but they didn't transition. <laughs> you can change and God give you what you want, but you didn't transition to become who he called you to be. That's what the Bible says. What is the use for someone to gain the whole world? He was talking about change if our transition is literally defaulting. The Roman Empire. The Bible says any nation that forgets God, they get thrown into hell. He didn't say any, any nation that doesn't know God. Which means that you know God. The enemy is not trying to make you deny God. He just wants you to forget him. Just a little, I forgot, can land you in trouble. For those of you who drive, just a split second of looking sideways can cause an accident, right? Just a little second. It wasn't much. I was just trying to pick up my phone and then, how many accidents are happening in your life right now? Just because you forgot God. Oh, we forgot God. We forget God. When all goes well, it's me. But when calamity struck, everybody asks, where is God? Isn't it strange where people try to find out where God is when everything is wrong now? But where was he when you had your degree, when you had, you know, that job? He was, was he not there? Because the Bible says any nation that forgets God. He's not talking about nation is a, is a summary of individual. So he always starts from one. One person forgetting God will teach the children to forget God. And eventually we have an entire society. I forgot God. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, then arose a, a Pharaoh that didn't know about God, didn't know anything about God. And the next thing you read, an entire nation is into slavery. One king who just woke up and didn't know anything. We have young people that don't know the God that you serve. Because you never told him how he healed you from cancer. How he rescued you from mistakes that could have cost your life. So they're worshipping, but they don't know who they got. So it's easy to forget. Some of the biggest rappers, all these people that are doing what, well, if you check the background, they are prayer mom, prayer grandma, prayer auntie. They know about the word, but they forgot about the God of the word. Somebody say quip. Look around your society. <laughs> Do you know that they're teaching kids now that there's over so many genders? This is the confusing part. Doctors say there are six Facebook said there's 70. BBC now said there's over 100. 100 genders. Some of the genders are very stupid. Two-spirited, human, and it's just, you just think this is demonic. If you are not equipped, there's war, war free ready to kick in in your home very, very soon. While you are speaking in tongue, your daughter come and say, I'm not female no more. I'm a two-spirited, igloo human monkey. And you got to say, oh, really? When did this transition happen? And if she will explain to you how a teacher discovered that she was a DNA, is a mixture of uh, rubbish. Are you equipped? This is what... The Bible, God ordered the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. God ordered them and said, when you sit down at the table, talk to your children about my goodness. Man, they didn't see the, they didn't see the, the Red Sea open. But faith come by hearing. Tell them how we opened that Red Sea. Because the Bible says, taste and see. Some people may not see. Some people who have tasted have to speak so others can see. 
if you don't speak it, there's a generation who will not taste and see. Look around you. Our society is so messed up. And we package it into intellectualism. Speaking well. Explaining how it makes sense because your DNA kind of is shifting. Are you equipped? Not just to change, but to transition. Before we close the first part, remember, go back to Romans 12. The Apostle Paul say, do not conform. He wasn't joking when he was saying this. Because you can pray and you don't even know you've conformed. <laughs> you can be so great. People clap for you and call you names. But when you stand before the master, will he say, depart from me? This is what the Bible calls him, doers of iniquities. In other words, mean you were in someone practicing iniquity while showing the change of someone who's righteous. So on the day God now reveals your identity because you told him that you changed, but he could see you didn't transition. Somebody say equipped. Before we go to the next part, I just want you to take a moment while the music is playing. Maybe you can write down on your phone, what are the four areas that you can say out loud you've changed, but have you really transitioned? <laughs> because the Bible said that in the last days, perilous time will come. We're already in these last days. Brexit is giving headache to politicians. They agree, they disagree, and they rearrange, they break down again, and they go in the... I've, I'm even surprised that there haven't been a fight in the House of Parliament yet. I'm, so, I'm surprised, very surprised. Because they don't know what they want anymore. Families will be shaken. But this is what the Bible says, let your heart not be troubled. Why is that going to happen? Because you have transitioned. Because the Bible says he called you from darkness into his marvel. That's transition. Uh -huh, uh. That's transition. You've transitioned. This is what God wants from you. As we finish part one, before we go to the question, can anybody's got a question they would like to ask based on what has been shared before we go to the second part and then we get some time to pray. This is your moment that is open for about five, ten minutes. <clears throat> if our helpers can help us, anybody's got a question based on the current time pastors preaches your more than welcome to throw in your question before we end in a part two and then we get some time to pray. All right, there's a question coming in. Okay, she's writing it down. She can actually say, she can actually say, yeah. You can say, it's all right. <coughs> Mike, you can help us, please. Can we encourage her? She's actually the first person. See? She be the adult. <laughs> all right. Richard. Hi, y'all. Um, you say transition takes time, so will we ever come to a point where we're fully transitioned and like righteous? If you've come to a place where you're fully transitioned, as long as you're <clears throat> in this earth, because the Bible actually talks about is that when he will be revealed, will become just like him, fully. As long as you're in this earth, again, transition is not a destination. It is a journey. That you're always getting better. Remember I talked about perfect. God is not looking for your perfection. But it is your willingness to continue to improve. Where 9 out of 10 is not good enough. That's why the Bible says, woe unto you when people start saying good things to you. It was literally talking about that people can, down you, can downsize you to a place where you become comfortable and you think you've arrived. That's why the Bible says that be careful if you think you are standing because you will fall. Because the Bible always wanted to put you in a place where you're always on your toes. That's why the Bible say, watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. Why? Because as long as you're watching, even animals that are watching never get eaten. Have you ever noticed that? That the one who don't watch are the one that just gets surprised and then the devil's dinner. 
Yeah. So the area of a transition, a longer job in this earth, until the master returned, he just wants you to keep improving. Amen? All right. <clears throat> Another question here. How do you recognize the pattern if it's been repackaged? Okay. Oh, great thing. If they change the package of Coke and you taste it, would you recognize it even if it's in the wrong package? So there are certain senses that can recognize something if it's been changed. That's why there's a gift called discernment. I, I talk about it in two ways. There's discernment and discretion. Discernment allows you to know the heart of people. Discretion allows other people not to really know your heart. Jesus walked with those two things at once. That's why when he asked the disciple, who do men say him, they couldn't recognize him because he had so much discretion. People don't know, are you Elijah? Are you, are you Jacob? Are you Moses? Are you, are you Tupac? Oh, who is this guy? Because he's got discretion. And I'll show you, because Joseph never had discretion, he ended up in the pit. So whatever Jesus is, is a representation of what somebody else is lacked. So the best way to know and to repackage is to always, in the days we're living in, pray that God fills you with a lot of discernment and discretion. And I'll tell you where I'm coming to it. Yeah, there's another question. Yes. Noticing a pattern of myself, if that makes sense. Yes, you can. Why not? I'll give an example. <clears throat> Abraham lied that his wife was his sister. Isaac lied that his wife was his sister. Jacob did mess up. Everybody just acting messing up. But when it comes to Joseph, Joseph makes one statement and say, I cannot do this against God. So there's a way that you can look at, again, the pattern, I've just shown you the pattern of the world. But even family have a pattern. Because there's a state that says that apple don't fall too far from a tree. So if your father blessed the world with many nations, <laughs> which means there's a pattern that you will also do the same, <laughs> or even better. So it is for your own interest to discipline yourself or else you just think oh no it was the devil it wasn't the devil because there is a pattern that the enemy can also utilize just like there's a pattern of blessing there's also a pattern that the enemy can switch and turn it into a disadvantage any other question yes hello um, are you always are you always going to have a transition Say it again. Are you always going to have a transition? Transition will always happen because change is always happening. Yeah? Because every day there's change. Ask your phone, right? There's iPhone well, 11 now. I know the people hate me because I'm Samsung, so get away all your iPhone people. Yeah? By the time next year, there'll be another iPhone already. Which means that in just six months, your phone is old. <laughs> Let's not even talk about cars now. Ladies, let's talk about hair, Brazilian. It's just that uh, this hair, three months, need to repeat the pattern. So in every area of life, there's already change happen. But transition allows you to flow with everything, but not to be changed by it. Is it making sense? Yeah? That's why the Bible says we are pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. It's about that. That things are changing, but it is not crushing or making you to become something that you're not. Because the Bible says that people will become, which means that either money will, when money is presented, if you did not transition, it can change you. Pride can come in, you know, like someone say, or people say, uh, you are humble. Until money, it's money and elevation, we're not sure. <laughs> yeah, are you really humble? It's like you're very humble until you see some checks you've never seen. <laughs> You'd be like, hey, can we go to the back, please? We can discuss this better. Yeah. But it just shows that God is interested in your transition so that change doesn't affect you. Any other question before we move to our last part? Yes. Um, so what happens if you don't hit um, the potential that God wants you to hit? Great question. I used to be a lover of potential, but now I'm no longer a lover of potential. I'll tell you why. Because potential is, and one pastor said this, God never called you to achieve your potential. He called you to achieve your purpose. Because there's so many potential. Like a knife has a lot of potential. I can, I can, I can use a knife to start you no know, screwdriver. <laughs> but that's not the purpose for it. The potential is so many things you can do. And I'll use David. David had a lot of potential. He was a singer, a warrior, a king and everything. But the purpose of it was that in, the, in every time you're living in, what, how do you fit your potential to fit your purpose? 
there is a season where God wants you to be a shepherd of the sheep. If you decided to be a warrior when you're supposed to be a shepherd, you are out of purpose even though you've got the potential. Is it making sense? So, your potential doesn't scare the enemy. It is your purpose does. That's why Jesus had so much potential, but every time you say, my time is not yet. I can't do this yet. And that's the danger we have because the world again shows you how great you can be, how you have to follow your pattern, do whatever, but you will be judged on the purpose. There's actually a video on, on, on social media where there was people that have been judged before God and some people didn't know what they were going to hell until God telling them that all I called you to be was to be a mother to those two kids. Because by you being a perfect mother to those two kids, they would have won the kingdom billions of souls. You decided to be a banker out of purpose. So the issue is never potential, is how potential fits in the purpose in the season that you're living in. It's making sense? Another question, what is the difference between change <clears throat> and transition? How can you differentiate them? I think I've covered this. But yeah, change is just the movement. But transition is, okay, change is movement, transition is improvement. Is it making sense? You can have a lot of movement, but you didn't improve. Treadmill, so you're running, but you didn't go anywhere. So that's a simple way I can explain both, yeah? So change is movement, transition is improvement. Any other question before we go to the last bit so that we can gain time? Two more questions. From the pastoral, how we want to hear some questions from you guys. Because you know when, when it doesn't work, the people just point their fingers. <laughs> but when it works, it's like, it's we. <laughs> Two more questions. Or should we move on to the next bit? All right. Now, this part is, uh, we touch on the first part. Remember, we talk about that, the age of the enlightened. Remember, we talk about the pattern of the ages of time, how we move from secular to whatever. So we are in what I call the age of the enlightened. So the age of the enlightened, just to recap again, is all about consciousness, spirituality, and all these things that what the Bible call gives you a form of godliness but there is no power. So you appear the deal, but you're not the real deal. And the two effects of it is false sense of security, and we're going to touch on false conversion. I had to bring Mr. Kanye in here, because <laughs> he's the juice of the moment, here. Yeah? Tell your neighbor equipped. equipped. The reason I had to bring my good friend here, because even preachers are debating, they don't know in which fence to, to sit on. Some have crowned him to be the, the next Apostle Paul of the 21st century. <laughs> yeah. When he himself says bigger than the Apostle Paul, I don't understand. You know, you know, he's having his own church now. You know, Sunday groovy. And they all do it. <laughs> I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> yeah. He's got one of the best musicians. I watch one of the videos. It's like, ha! Some of the calls they're hitting. I'm thinking, my fingers need to see some new teachers now. Because I don't know where this call comes from. And people are like, oh, but what is the issue with Mr. Kanye? Somebody say false conversion. All right, let's actually look at what the Bible says. Because some people think that the Bible doesn't answer it. Christians are scared. They don't know. We need to speak about it. Yeah, because Mr. Kanye West is not the first experiment. I'm going to show you. Remember, I talk about the pattern. I'm going to show you the pattern. Because he's actually representing the gateway that will happen from 2020. <laughs> You will see a lot of these people that will come. That's what the Bible says. People will come in my name. Jesus even said, no, everybody will say Jesus, Jesus. So just because I say Jesus, he's got the, his album is the number one in the gospel chart. He's collaborated with Fred Hammond, all these people. Snoop Dogg is even got album. So Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And he's smoking weed. <laughs> Still cussing. <laughs> Just to make sure he didn't lose his street side. <laughs> First Timothy 3.6. He said, a church leader must not be a recent convert. I want you to listen carefully to this part. Or he may be proud and the devil will cause him to fall. Now, people preach as if it's just for the pastors, for the people. No, no. Let's rephrase this. What the verse saying, if you are not equipped, you will fall into what they call, you are either a believer, a convert, I'll, I'll, I'll bring in the word, 
couple of other translations. You're a novice. Novice basically means that you are a try and error. Try and error. Would you go give your stomach to a doctor that is trying error? They will leave a machete inside your stomach. <laughs> but the Bible says, if you are going to lead, if you're going to do something for God and you are not equipped, you are classifying the three things. A new believer, novice, or just a convert. And the Bible says, going back to the verse, the devil will make you fall. In other words, the devil doesn't even laugh because you got converted. He laughs and thinking, this is going to be interesting. I want to see. He can even give you the lamp. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Remember this pattern. So we're going to answer Mr. Kanye West. And I'm, uh, maybe his followers are going to attack me, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> let them find me. That's all right. Yeah. The Bible's talking about it. Whatever position you're going to do, God is concerned about how equipped you are. If you're not equipped, the devil is going to buy his time because he knows that I'm going to make you fall. Now, this is what he says. Remember, I said there's nothing under the sun. Kanye West say, I'm no longer making gospel music. Other places are saying, he even tell his wife, don't dress like that anymore because we're saved. Everybody's bopping to Jesus is king. Let's lift up our hand. By you understanding the pattern. Because if you don't, it is possible that you've crowned the devil in a seat that God was supposed to sit on. The Bible called this abomination. God doesn't have a problem with sin. But when it comes to abomination, God will hold you responsible. You've sanctified someone that was not supposed to be sanctified yet. You've given him a passport to heaven where he's still a candidate to hell. Because we don't, we don't know who's saved no more. Oh, don't, no one can judge. <laughs> I can't judge, you know. The Bible says spiritual man judges all things. Somebody say all things. It's in the Bible. A spiritual man, which means if you can't judge, basically if you can't understand things, you're not spiritual. We've lost spiritual people in the church. So Satan is having a red carpet coming in. Who remember Maze? Some people are very young for this. Who remember Maze? Yeah. Or the old generation remember Maze. What Kanye West is doing is 10% compared to what Mr. Maze has done. When Mr. Maze confessed and said he's changed, TBN, all the people embrace him and say, yeah, God is doing it. Wow, he had Mr. Creflo Dollars as his mentor. What a CV to have. Started his church, El Elyon. Doing good. Invited. Sitting down, preaching like Creflo Dollars. Oh, about faith, uh, faith is a substance for what we see. People were thinking, wow, he had members Coming to his church. Is he making sense to you? The whole world say he was saved because he's speaking the language. Talking, quoting. And there were rappers who were laughing. And guess what? We Christians defended him. We call it a move of the spirit. God is doing big revival. Foolishness. A few years later, 2014, he decided to leave his church. Not even her. Not even him. He leaves the church with his wife. Go back, not only backslide, but make a track. And he's called, welcome back. And he's cussing. <laughs> the whole church were like, what? Imagine you come to church and your pastor says, he's, he's, you know, he's breaking it down. <laughs> So you're already confused. How come he's not pastoring? But you're not seeing him. He's cussing. <laughs> the deliverer needs to be deliv delivered. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> There's actually an article where he say he regrets being a pastor. That hurts my heart. He regrets it to the core. Standing in a place where people had to be disciples for years to even preach. And we let this man have the audacity not just to speak, but to disciple people. Do you know how many pastors who are not supposed to be pastors are leading churches? 
How many souls are going to go to hell because we embrace every move? That's what the Bible says. Test every spirit. The apostle Paul said, even if an angel come down from heaven and preaches another gospel that is not what I preach, curse him. He said, let him be cursed. He didn't say swear him before someone <laughs> took the wrong translation. Because he knew there is another gospel. The American have made it so easy that we just accept anybody. If Beyonce gets saved today, people say, oh, it's a move of God. Who told you? Who told you? And I'll prove it to you. I like this one. We have prepared a generation that gives their life to God without really knowing God. That's what we call conversion. We love it. Oh, there were people that were slain. There were many people. And we brought them to God. We've changed with no transition. As long as it's being recorded, as long as people saw me traveling everywhere, I call it ministry. God calls it foolishness. What Mr. Kanye is doing is, is 10% compared to this man. Because he was invited everywhere. The top guys had him. He had a spiritual father that, that basically told everybody that he saved when he wasn't. And that's what people love. Oh, as long as I've got Bishop Jacob, my spiritual father can show them that. Who told you? The Bible says, test yourself if you're still in the faith. If God is speaking to people who are in the faith to test themselves, not a new person that hasn't even started the faith, what are we testing? What are we really testing? People that have been there for years, God said, work your salvation in fear and trembling. Now you are working your salvation as you're walking to the beach. Something is wrong. And we have people that are defending these people using scripture. And before God, they will have to give an account. Because you are rolling in the carpet for someone who is not yet transformed. Going back again. A church leader must not be a convert. <laughs> in what area are you trying to lead and God is looking at you thinking, boy, sit down. Oh, it's so easy. I'll just go live on, on, on Insta Live and start my own life. I've got a word. I've got a word. 5,000 followers are calling me daddy. <laughs> the devil is laughing. <laughs> they think you have come in. <laughs> they will say, don't worry. Because the devil will make you fall. Right now, it's actually the devil's best time to exist. Because he has a plan on how to... There was a year where pastors upon pastors were falling into calamity. Sins and us. What's going on? It's like there's a popcorn falling everywhere. Because the devil was buying his time. Remember I told you it's not about change, but transition. God can prevent growth when there's no management. In the Garden of Eden, the Bible said God did not send the rain on the earth because he did not see somebody who could tilt the ground. Stop asking for the reign of revival if you're not putting the work ethic to tilt the ground. What ground are you tilting? God hasn't seen you sweating, you want favor. To rest on whose head? Rest on whose head? The apostle of all say, I work harder than all of you. He came late and yet he's working hard. Have you actually worked for God yet? <laughs> Some of us haven't. <laughs> and we're shouting, revival! God is speaking, please. <laughs> Stop singing, go work. <laughs> Revive! Ah! God, the devil's speaking. I'm not involved. That's not me. Eh? It wasn't me. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm just going to tell you, God, like, no, listen, this one is them. It's not me, it's them. <laughs> Let me touch quickly on forced conversion before I show you one example and then we get some time to pray. You can actually, I'm going to give you six ways forced conversion affects people. So don't look at it just thinking it's for Kanye, but it can reflect in all of our lives. False conversion can hit you to a place where you are blasphemous, number one. Blasphemy. Blasphemy simply means that where you have profanity in you. We have a lot in the church. You're saved, but you're still swearing. <laughs> and you call it, I stay, I'm taking my time into this salvation. <laughs> yeah? Speaking in tongues. Ra -ba -ba -ba. False conversion. Roman 1.8. We have a lot. They come and give God their hand, but the heart is far away. And the devil just plants. Remember I told you about the drop of urine? Be a blasphemy. Oh, you change. You save. Oh, you say. You speak in tongue. You go baptized. But you're still 
profanities in you. That's why Jesus said, the prince of this world came and he found nothing in me. He was talking about this. <laughs> He didn't find nothing, which means every day Jesus was praying so that the enemy won't find. Stop praying for breakthrough if you're not going to transition. Because if you don't transition, the promised land will bring you back to slavery. Do you realize how many times, do you realize why God took them through the Red Sea? Because the Red Sea, if they had to come back, they had to think, how do we open the Red Sea? Because if it wasn't the Red Sea, they would have come back any time. That's why the Bible says God knew the easy way, but he took them the long way. The, sometimes you've got to thank God for some long ways. Eh? God took you the long way. Because the long way you think, ah, I can't backslide. Ah, people already saw me. Ah, thank God for the long ways. Because if he takes you the short way, you just think, ah, just go back. And it's like, in, I'm out. And one time you go in, before you come back, God close the door. Number two, perversion, selfishness, misimp- mis- misinterpretation of the scriptures. There's a lot. Some even in ministry, preachers that are preaching things that you're thinking, where did they get a revelation from? Number three, unrighteousness, a life with no holiness, no fear for God. Yeah. Even pagan, I fear for God. I'm telling you. Pagan, they'll be drinking, they'll come to church, they'll be like. Huh. But we have Christians that will come in. Anyhow. <sighs> Man of God, who are going? Yeah? <laughs> what are you saying, boss? Do you know the people that laugh at, what's his name? Eli- Is it Elisha that was bold? Yeah? A bear came up and then Savage them. We've lost the respect. The house of God, you see, I remember one time there's some woman who posted a picture in live worship. She had a live. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> so people can see in the life that this was deep. <laughs> if it's really deep, your phone will fall down, your head will fall on one side, you will fall on the other side. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> But when you see people have to show life and how they are crying, we've lost it. Muslim look at Christian and thinking, what is this? Because they know how to reverence. We've lost the reverence. How do you expect young people to reverence the God that you have disrespected? You are disrespecting God and you want your kids to respect him. Young people are not stupid. False conversion. You speak in tongue, but you're disrespecting the God who gives those tongues. Next thing, merchandising. Commercializing the gospel. <laughs> we don't need to touch into this. People touch anointing oil. They have shofar. They have this. You don't know what to have. It's like a new gear. You, you come on Sunday, you look like an Iranian, Arab, African, everything together. You don't know what's going on. You know, if you get this water huh, straight from huh, Israel, huh, it will force conversion. Next thing, heresy, wrong doctrine. And the last one, prosperity. I didn't include into this, but there are actually two great preachers that started repenting for preaching the wrong gospel. Yeah. I didn't put into this, but God laid him a hard long time ago. Three categories that's going to happen. Some ministers, God will take them to glory. Some minister, God is going to start exposing them. And the third category, some great minister, God will give them room to repent. Because they will actually help the next generation to do what God wants them to do. That's why it's important. You could be in church. Are you equipped to handle what's next? If God took your pastor to glory, are you ready to step in? Or you'll be like a shocker. Who's going to be a pastor? He's like, okay, let's do a lot. Let's, let's do African, African play. Ah, you go. It's up in America. It's like a business. There's five votes. Who say I, I? Who doesn't like him? Nay, nay. Like him, there's next pastors. No, he don't like his face. His preaching is boring. We no longer have those things where we see God. We know he's the one. You have to be equipped. Because I'm telling you, who would have known that one day Dr. Miles Moreau would have just died like this? Who would have known? Look at his church. His son couldn't even take more 
of his church. He tried, they tried, they tried to put him in, but the shoe was too big. He couldn't fill in the void. He can't bring in the wisdom because this, this is not born by just studying books. If God doesn't equip you, you will be talking garbage. I'm telling you, his son can't continue. Eh? They can't, they're struggling. Because this is a man that had the law. The problem is nobody was equipped. Elijah had the mantle. Elisha was equipped. Elisha picked up the mantle. Elisha was ready. Nobody was equipped. And there he died with anointing in his bones. <laughs> Let me end with this. The Bible talks about Simon the Sorcerer before we close and pray. Simon the Sorcerer, you can go sometime and read it at home. The Bible said this man was a sorcerer, amazing people, doing crazy things. And if you go back, the Bible says that he even started believing and he got baptized. This is your Kanye West in the Bible. Some people think he's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible. <laughs> There's nothing that we see that the Bible doesn't explain. Simon the sorcerer was quote-unquote saved, baptized, speaking, and the Bible says when he saw Peter laying the hand of the Holy Spirit, he said, can I buy this? Wait, you got baptized, you didn't know this thing cannot be given by money. He shows you he changed, but he didn't transition. Remember we talk about, and the devil made him fall. Let's all bow our head before we get some time to pray. If the singers can come to help us, you're going to give us a song. This should change a lot of things. Because 2020... God is laying in my heart because God is about to equip people to deal with specific issues. I've spoken to Pastor Mania um, how God laid in my heart, especially the issue of gun crime killing in London. God has been dealing with me. <clears throat> I didn't include it into the PowerPoint. There's something called the concept of the blood that God began to make me understand what is killing this nation. Some of you, God wants to equip you so that enough is enough. Elijah said, let God be God. If God is real, let him be real. Because Joshua said, you choose this day who you're going to really serve. Let's make up our mind and say, if you're really going to be for this Jesus for real, be a bite. Don't, don't cut corners. Because remember we spoke about it. <clears throat> If you start cutting corners to the devil, you are a new convert. You are a novice. Let's stop having novice in the things of God. It breaks the heart of God. Because this is what the Bible says. If any man speak, let him speak as if God is speaking. God said, every time you open your mouth, I should, they should see me speaking. Which means you have to study to make yourself approve. Don't come and give people a big scripture. Don't come and give people a lazy word. Because there are people whose souls depend on you. Someone is between life and death and they leave their house on Sunday and you give them a, a microwave message. God will require the blood from your head. I'm telling you, this has really scared me. That every time God gives you a platform, He expects you to give your best. But how can you give your best when you've only given Him what is left? Because you're so busy, full up with yourself. All eyes closed. Whether you preach, whether you are just a young person. If you know for yourself that there's a lot of changes happening, but you haven't really transitioned. I like one man, Jesus about to heal him. And he says, Jesus said, do you believe? I like what he says. He was honest enough to say, Lord, help my unbelief. You understand? I, I, can, I can show you that I'm a believer, but there's so many issues in me. There's so many pain. There's so many things I don't understand. If you're here with me, just lift up your hand because this is going to be for everybody. Whether you're a preacher, we're living in dangerous times. When you have people like Kanye West and I becoming the voices of the church, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Because the Bible says that when the righteous is silenced, the wicked increase. Weakness is increasing because righteousness is silent. Lift up your voice. Jehovah is 
有你，超乎我意。有你 ，Somebody say 超乎我意。有你，超乎我意。有你 ，It's called the I am that I am. Say 超乎我意，超乎我意。有你。One more time, say Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Say Jehovah is your name. One more time, say Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Somebody say, mighty warrior, great in battle, yeah. Jehovah is your name. Lift your hands, say, mighty warrior, great, great in battle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, Jehovah. Come on, let's raise it up. Say, mighty warrior, say, mighty warrior. Somebody say, great, great in battle. Great in battle, great in battle, Jehovah, Jehovah. Come on, you can do better than this. Say, mighty warrior, say, mighty warrior. Hallelujah. Say, great in battle, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Come on, raise your hands. Mighty warrior, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mighty warrior. Great, 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 great. Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hand. God is about to equip somebody tonight. God is about to equip somebody tonight. God is going to equip you that you are going to do what your family has never done. You are going to be the exception of your family. If he's mighty in battle, if he's great, I want you to lift up your hand. Let the move of God just touch. Mighty warrior, mighty warrior. Reba ba 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 ba, shatter the bow, shatter. Great in battle, great in battle, great in battle. Jehovah is, Jehovah is. Somebody say, mighty, mighty warrior, yeah yeah yeah. Great, great, great. Let's go one more time. Say mighty, 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 mighty in this place. Say yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, Jehovah is, Jehovah is your name. We're gonna pray three type of prayer. Before Jesus started preaching, his first message was repent because the kingdom is coming. <laughs> God cannot equip you with his kingdom until you have repented. Repentance is turning away from evil so that you can face God. Right now you're going to pray. You're going to tell God, I turn from anything that is evil so that I can face you. When Isaiah saw the Lord, he said, woe is me. Every time we turn from ourselves to God, the Bible said those who turn to him are forever shining. When Moses spent time with God and when he came down, the Bible said the people could not look. There is an equip that comes on your life. 
that you don't have to speak but just your presence alone I'm talking to somebody this evening the Bible says when Esau met Jacob Jacob said seeing you is as if I'm seeing God no everybody's supposed to have the burning bush experience it takes one man to have a burning bush so that he can become the burning bush this generation God is about to make some of you become your burning bush, your generation. You are on fire, but you're not consumed. You have issues, but you're still triumphing. This life is happening, but you're still conquering. That's what the Bible calls you. You are more than overcomer. I want you to lift up your voice right now. Pray with me. Say, God, I turn away from anything that is evil so I can face you. If I can face you, I begin to be transformed. I don't want to conform to the pattern of this world. Let's lift up our voice and begin to pray. Lord, return, 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 return from anything that is evil. Anything that is evil. The lust of the eye, the lust of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We want to face upon you. We face to you. We turn to you.